Here's how you can turn any photo into a detailed 3D model using Blender and FSpy. So open up FSpy and bring your image in. I like to turn off dim image here uh, just so I have a cleaner view. And you have these handles here that represent different axes. So X and Y are the default, but in the dropdown you can change them to a Z axis if you want. And then you just sort of line them up with the axes there. And then if you hit shift while you're adjusting one of the handles, it zooms in so you can place them a little bit more accurately. And once you do that, you'll see that there's this 3D cursor that has an X, Y, and Z axis. So when you think you're done, um, you can like move that around the image and see if everything's lining up. So, you know, are your vanishing points all aligned? And as long as you're pretty close, um, that'll do the trick. And then wherever you leave this cursor is going to be your origin point in Blender. So I like to try to put it on a corner. So here the concrete's, you know, not exactly flesh and square, but this is close enough for the corner between these walls and the ground. Then you can just save your FSpy project and then open up Blender. And using the FSpy add-on, you will have an import FSpy option here in Blender. And that'll create a camera that has the focal length and vanishing points all aligned with what you just set up in FSpy. And it also brings in the image as a background image in the camera. So if you add um, a plane and rotate it, you can start lining up. So I'm gonna bring the corner of this plane to the origin point. And then in edit mode, I'm just going to take the edges of the plane and start moving them along, you know, the X, Y, and Z axes to uh, extend it a bit. Then I'm going to take this other edge. I'm going to hit E to extrude and then Y to lock it to the Y axis and drag it down uh, the Y axis there. Now I'm going to add a texture to this plane and I'm going to drop the image uh, into the base color here. As you can see, because the UV isn't uh, super accurate, uh, it's all distorted. I'm gonna use this camera project modifier that was developed by Ian Hubert and his team. This creates a node group that you can plug into the vector of your image and it'll project properly onto your geometry. It's really simple and we're gonna cover using the UV project modifier. The challenge with that modifier is you have to add a subdivision surface modifier, which adds geometry and can clog up your um, Blender project file. This camera project modifier doesn't have that problem at all. You can keep your geometry super simple. The challenge is if you're going to create an asset for your asset browser, you're going to have to create like a collection that includes the camera because that camera is key for the projection. You can't apply it the same way you can a UV project modifier. And because I like building everything and putting it into my Blender asset folder, so I have these assets whenever I need them in any project file without having to search and append everything. Uh, I'm going to use the UV project modifier when I finalize this, but for now I'm just going to use this add-on here. Um, but from here I'm just going to extrude and kind of get the shape of this building and the other buildings. And the next thing I'm going to work on is finding this door here, and I'm just going to add some loop cuts, line it up as best I can, and then select that face, hit E to extrude it in. I'm going to add a loop cut here where this ledge is, create the loop cuts down at the base of that ledge, and then I'm going to extrude it uh, along the Y axis until the edge kind of lines up from that perspective. And as you can see, the texture is projecting the same way, except now there's some geometry that's casting shadows. And now we're just gonna keep adding more and more details this way. Next, I'm gonna go for these other doors on the front. So just add some more loop cuts, um, outline the door, and you know, hit E to extrude in. Now I'm going to add this kind of like corrugated metal roof overhang. So I'm going to add a plane, scale it up, add the same image texture, label it, 
And then I'm going to kind of get the rough scale of um, how wide and how deep this overhang goes. And because, you know, the texture is projecting, all I need to do is slide it around until it lines up. And then to get that corrugated shape, I'm just going to tab into edit mode, add a bunch of loop cuts, and then select every other one and hit G to move them up. And that's going to create this corrugated metal shape. So now I'm just going to add some lights of various colors, and that's just to help see where the light is landing, what's causing shadows, and how that geometry is starting to um, create that shadow there. And so now I'm going to go back into these doors, and I'm going to go in and do these narrow little windows here. So I'm going to line up the edges of the door to get that, you know, the whole window. I'm going to highlight those windows, hit P to separate by selection, so that I can um, add a bunch of loop cuts to these windows without adding a ton of loop cuts to the door and the rest of the wall geometry as well. So now I'm just going to go in and line up my loop cuts with all of the, the fronts of the metal parts of this window. I'm going to extrude that in just a touch. So I'm going to select all of the door faces and also separate the door as well. So hit P, separate by selection, and then now we have just these doors here. So I'm going to label them doors. And um, the hinges of these doors, there's kind of these like crevices. So to do that, you can add a single loop cut where that crevice is, select the edges for each of those doors, and then hit Control B to bevel it. Uh, just a little bit, so uh, it's just pretty narrow right there. And then hit E to extrude that in, and that's just going to create like a deep indent crevice here that's going to stay dark and in shadow, even if there was light shining directly on the doors, for example. And now while I'm still in edit mode, I'm going to hit Shift A and add a cylinder. And I'm just going to add all of the little details like the hinges here, and then also the door handles, which is uh, another vertical cylinder and then two horizontal ones. And I'm just going to kind of move it around until it seems like it's all lining up properly. Now we're going to do the pipes and typically you'll do like a long cylinder for pipes. But what I found is that for a lot of images, pipes aren't perfectly uh, straight. And so the solution that I found that worked super well with a bunch of these is actually to use a path. So if you add a new path and then go into geometry and hit the depth there, um, you can get like a cylinder that's the same size as the pipe. Then you can take all the vertices and hit E to extrude them along the path of the pipe. So this was not like super horizontal um, path here, but now I have something that is aligned perfectly. And I can add the same material um, that's projected there as well. I'm actually going to go into the material and take the image texture and drag it into a bump node and just turn down uh, the intensity a little bit and then add a color ramp and bring that into the roughness. And this is just going to add a little bit more detail to the texture and have it react a bit more with the lighting. Um, but now getting back to this pipe here, uh, we can also make this, you know, move around the corner just by adjusting our point of view and then hitting E to extrude. And we can follow the path of this pipe pretty perfectly. Um, I know that whenever I try to do this with cylinders and I'm extruding like the end of it, uh, I can't quite get this accurate this quickly. It, it takes a little bit more time. Um, and then because this is a path, um, we can just go in and adjust our points here, our vertices, uh, to make it uh, align a little bit better, depending on uh, depending on our needs. And this goes pretty quick, so it can do the same technique here for the smaller pipes. I can just duplicate it, move it down, uh, and then make any little adjustments that I need here. And then I have a ton of um, the pipes that are in this photo, which adds a ton of detail and realism. You can see all of the shadows um, that are created by having that 3D geometry there in, in, the, in the model itself. 
Another step to take here is to duplicate the material. And then what we're gonna do is adjust some of the roughness settings based on the parts of the image. So this door is gonna be a lot more reflective because it's metal than the plaster wall. So I'm gonna duplicate the material and assign it to this section of the door. This can get a little tedious because of all of the detailing here. Um, but it's definitely worth it just to take the time, select all the faces that you need to, and assign this new material. So now because I ultimately want to add this to my asset browser, so I need um, this material to be projected onto this geometry, but not be relying on a camera. And so the way to do that is to use a UV project modifier and then to apply it. So I'm going to, in the material, delete this Ian Hubert add-on here. Uh, which is super helpful for all of the modeling because it keeps the geometry simple. Um, but now I'm going to bake all of that projection in. So I'm going to add a UV project modifier. I'm going to select the UV here, and then I'm going to choose the camera. And this is the camera that was created with FSpy. It's going to be a little bit inaccurate because you need to set the aspect ratio. And if you have a normal aspect ratio, like 16 by nine, you could put that here. Um, if you have something that's maybe more irregular because it's an image, you would just put the X and Y dimensions of the image itself here. And then that's gonna get everything to project normally. So as you can see here, this is another corner and um, I go through the same process with this image using FSpy, creating some geometry, using paths to create all of these pipes, and then also adding in some cubes to these box details on the bottom, and then ending up with this little corner that you can see that I used here in the shot from Friends of Sophia. And if you uh, go onto my Patreon, I will provide this and a couple more of these kind of like building corners uh, for you there. So uh, subscribe to the Patreon and you can have these to download and, you know, drop them into your uh, projects as well.